Hey everybody, welcome to Explain by Michael. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most fundamental and one of the most important concepts when you learn probability and statistics. Probability function. Now, because it's one of the first things we learn about in probability and statistics, there's no prior math knowledge needed aside from what you learned in middle school about graphs and functions. If you feel confident on those, you can go ahead and skip to this time right here. If not, we're going to take a moment to review and then we're going to draw the connection on how functions relate to probability density functions. Now, why should we learn about probability density functions? Well, almost everything we do in statistics is based on a cumulative density function. And we find that by integrating the probability density function formula. So before we can move on to that step, we really need to understand what a probability density function is, what it looks like, and how we can use it to our advantage for the cumulative distribution function. Now, let's review some algebra some graph theory. If you're like me, you took high school math, maybe even AP calculus, but I never truly understood what a function was until I learned about it in college. So let's review. You're used to seeing y is defined as a function of x. And what that means is when we put in an x value, we're going to measure the output, and that's our y column. So, for any given x that we put into this function, we are going to measure its y output. And when we do an infinite number of these, When we do an infinite number of these, we make up the graph itself, and we can connect the dots. Now, one way that we can solve this is by plugging in x values and checking the y for the formula. For example, The inputs are chosen randomly, and the outputs depend entirely on the relationship that the function defines. That might be something that's given. Here, it's something that we made up. We made a relationship between x and y. And remember, we input an x, and we measure its corresponding output. That is the basics of a graph. So let's learn about how that now affects the probability density or probability mass function. With probability functions, all we're saying is that when we input an x value, we're going to measure now the probability that x value occurs. Just how functions might have related the time of day with the temperature or the time of year with the amount of rainfall, it's just a subset of functions as a whole and it's limited down to probability itself. Now because it acts as a function, we're going to graph it the same way with our input, our random variable on the horizontal axis and our measurement, our probability on the vertical axis. Now, let's take an example of rolling a dice. The probability that I roll a one on a dice is one out of six different sides. We're gonna set up the same type of tree that we use to graph a function. So the probability of rolling a one, <clears throat> the probability of rolling a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, they're all one six. I have equal likelihood of happening. Now all that's left to do is graph these inputs and the outputs on my probability function. Now, 
It's important to note what will happen to our probabilities when we plug in a zero or a seven. With this dice example, it's easy to see. When we plug in a zero, there is nothing. We cannot roll a zero. It's impossible to roll a zero. Same with the seven. If we're rolling one die, it is impossible to roll a seven. So we can note that on here. Now that tells us anything left of one is going to be a zero value, and anything greater than six is also going to be a zero value. So we can now draw our lines on this graph. The area of the probability density function then is under this rectangle. Now, if you've already taken some of the course, you might recognize this as the uniform distribution. All that means is that we have a uniform probability, one-sixth, of each of the x's occurring for our domain. Now, we can do something else with this. We can take this from a graph and an input-output tree, and we can create a formula for this distribution. We're gonna to have to reverse our thinking. Sometimes we're given a formula and we can draw a graph, here we are given a graph and we're going to reverse our thinking and draw a formula. We draw these curly brackets to show that there are multiple items within this probability. It's not just a single formula because our domain is limited. So we know that anything less than one is going to be a zero value. So when x is less than one, we get a zero probability. Similarly, when x is greater than 6, we get a 0 output as well. Now in the middle, it takes a little bit more thinking, but we already did it in this tree. We know that there's an equal probability for each x value. That is, probability does not depend on x itself. Therefore, we know that it's a 1 sixth probability for 1 to 6 x values. Now, it's important to remember that every single probability density or probability mass function has this setup. X is on our horizontal axis, and the probability is measured on the vertical. Oftentimes, statisticians will not draw either of these labels, and we just get a general graph. Maybe it's a bell curve, maybe it's an exponential distribution, but it's important to remember the similarities that we have to regular functions from algebra from high school and math. It helps us think about what are we actually looking at here. And we're going to get into that more in our next video where we learn about CDFs, cumulative distribution functions. The main takeaways from today's lesson is that we can relate a probability density function back to the math that we learned in high school algebra. It's important to remember that these axes always have labels. Our horizontal is our input and our vertical is the probability of that input occurring. The second thing to remember is that the distributions such as Poisson, exponential, Weibull, or the normal distribution, they are defined by their formulas aka defined by the shapes of their curves. That is the difference between looking at the normal distribution versus the exponential is that they have a different formula. Now they apply to different scenarios as well, but the difference mathematically is how we measure the probability of an x occurring. Now, if you have any questions on the fundamentals of probability mass, probability density functions, please leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to get around. Also, I would love to help you learn more, so please leave a comment on what types of videos or what content you'd like to see. Do we want to learn more about the difference between probability mass and probability density functions, cumulative distribution function? I want to know what you guys are learning in your classes, so definitely drop that below. That'll help me make better videos for y'all.